Hi everyone, and welcome to Lazy Lion. Now we feel like we're about to kick the hornet's nest with our next entry, because really, depending on when you were first introduced to the Gundam franchise, we know that you're either gonna love this one or hate it. So if you don't think you'll be able to enjoy a whole video on the series Gundam Seed, leave now or forever hold your peace because we're about to tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't skip out on this Gundam entry, and why this is one hill we're willing to die on. So... In this video, we'll be covering the plot and creative process of Gundam Seed, as well as some key themes driving the series, such as what happens when humans try to speed up human evolution by tampering with people's genes. If this sounds like something that would interest you, stick around. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let's launch in 3, 2, 1. The story takes place during the Cosmic Era. At this time, scientific advancements have allowed humans, through the manipulation of genes, to essentially create a subspecies of superhumans called coordinators. Coordinators are faster, stronger, smarter, and have the ability to heal much quicker. Unsurprisingly, what started out as a means to advance all of mankind instead ended up creating a deep-seated resentment in all of those who were being left behind. This sparked an overall increase in violence, which ultimately led the coordinators to leave Earth and set up colonies in space known as plants. This separation didn't exactly make the heart grow fonder though, and it wasn't long before a war broke out between the coordinators and the naturals. This clash quickly escalates to the point where neither side will be content until the other is essentially wiped out. Even those who wish to stay out of the conflict like the neutral nation of Orb, who believe it's possible for both sides to live in harmony, are eventually pulled into the fight when the Naturals Earth Alliance forces them to build five new mobile suits and a top-of-the-line warship, able to compete with the Coordinator's more advanced Zaft military forces. When Zaft finds out that these new secret designs are being hidden in Orb's space colony Heliopolis, they send a team of elite soldiers to go and steal them. This is where we meet our reluctant hero, Kira Yamato, an engineering student studying on Heliopolis. When the Zaft soldiers infiltrate the colony rather aggressively, citizens are urged to make their way to emergency bunkers. On the way, Kira becomes separated from his friends, and somehow runs right into the middle of a firefight between the Zaft and Earth Alliance soldiers. Clearly a civilian who's in the wrong place at the wrong time, he's saved by an Earth Alliance officer who literally pushes him into one of the new Gundam models called the Strike Gundam. When the officer gets injured, Kira is forced to either get in the pilot seat or watch his friends be killed. A choice that leads to an unexpected consequence when one of his shots tears a hole in the outer layer of Heliopolis, leading to the immediate evacuation of all citizens. Not only that, but by accidentally becoming privy to a top secret military project, Kira and his friends soon find themselves being detained on the new warship model, dubbed the Archangel, now in the possession of the Earth Alliance. Things become even more dire when Kira is suspected of being a Saft spy when it's revealed that Kira is in fact a coordinator. It's only thanks to his friends who are all naturals vehemently standing up for him that he doesn't become imprisoned. As the Archangel gets continually pursued by Saft forces, it quickly becomes apparent that due to being a coordinator, Kira is the only person on board who can properly pilot the Strike Gundam and therefore protect the ship and all those aboard. That's a heavy burden for anyone to shoulder, let alone a 16 year old, especially when he comes face to face with his childhood friend, Athrin Zala, who's a member of Zaft's elite unit and happens to pilot one of the stolen Gundam models from Heliopolis. On one side, Kira's considered an enemy, and on the other, a traitor. I mean, 
talk about a no-win scenario. But despite that, Kira notes that doing nothing won't help protect the people he cares about, nor will it bring the war closer to an end. So when he's forced to get into the pilot seat over and over again, Kira has to decide what it is he's really fighting for. And when both sides are hellbent on destroying each other, can Kira and his friends find an alternate option that leads to peace instead? Or is war just in human nature? The Mobile Suit Gundam franchise is one of the most popular and well-known anime franchises in all of Japan, and is largely credited with introducing the real robot genre to anime which came about when Yoshiyuki Tomino, the original creator of the Gundam franchise, became disillusioned and frustrated with the overall stance that the Japanese people were taking towards war, largely ignoring their own past shame and involvement in it, to the point where it was even rarely spoken about or even acknowledged, something that Tomino felt was wrong. This is why he wanted to create an anime that dealt with the real horrors of war in a way that was hard to ignore. Tomino hoped that it would spark a conversation and perhaps allow for self-reflection. To do this, he veered away from the popular super robot animes of the time that portrayed robots as these superhero-like magical beings who were either sent to Earth to aid humanity or were created by some mad scientist as a super weapon to destroy it. No, if Tomino was going to be successful, his robots had to be different. Instead, they would be weapons of war that would be piloted by real soldiers, real people, much like a tank or a fighter jet would be. Through this, we would get to see the real trauma and impact that war has on these soldiers and those around them. And though over the years we've seen countless Gundam installments tackle Tomino's vision, the one that really stuck with us and probably felt like the one that most successfully conveyed the theme of ordinary people, soldiers, and civilians experiencing war-related trauma and how they deal with it was for us Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. We didn't find this too surprising since the director of Gundam Seed, Mitsuo Fukuda, has boasted about being a longtime fan of the Gundam franchise, and stated that when creating the concept for Gundam Seed, he was heavily inspired by the first Mobile Suit Gundam installment by Tomino, which was the first series to introduce this theme. And we can definitely see some parallels between the two, though we'd never go so far as to call it a remake of the first Gundam series but rather like to think of it more as director paying homage to the origins of a franchise that they love and giving it a more modern twist, making it appealing to a whole new generation of fans. To give it this more modern twist, Fukuda brought in Chiaki Morosawa as the head screenwriter. It was due to her suggestion that the story takes place in the Cosmic Era timeline. This allowed Fukuda to introduce the idea of two human subspecies, naturals and coordinators, and their continued conflict, without worrying about how that would affect the original Gundam Universal Century timeline. She also included more drama and romance in the script to draw in female viewers. This was something that the previous Gundam series, Gundam Wing, briefly tapped into. Murasawa just took that idea and turned the dial up to 11, which was another bone of contention for older Gundam fans who were used to the more heavily male-targeted Gundam series of the past. But to that we say, poo-poo to you, because Gundam Seed is all about inclusion, and as a girl growing up, it was great to see strong female characters in positions of power such as military captains, or head scientists and engineers, or even Gundam pilots. Besides, Mobile Suit Gundam has always been categorized as a space opera, which by definition is all about drama. So again, what's the problem exactly? Actually, the fact that there was such a strong emphasis on drama also allowed for there to be more character growth. With each new situation that the characters faced, they evolved. Sometimes for the better, and sometimes for the worse. Regardless, it only helped them come across as more human. Even characters like Faye, who use manipulation in order to survive, we felt were honest examples that needed to be portrayed. Despite how much we hated her, we could at least understand her character. Though still. 
Please die now. Another thing that helped modernize the Gundam Seed series was the soundtrack, which thanks to Toshihiko Sahashi turned out spectacular. The decision to use popular J-pop artists to sing on the opening and ending tracks especially helped draw in a younger generation. It's also probably the first anime soundtrack I ever felt the need to get my hands on. That's right, it's amazing. As soon as this video is over, we'd recommend you go check it out. The Gundam franchise is also famously known for applying real-world physics to their Gundams and other spacecrafts. We get this lovely example of it in the desert episode of Gundam Seed when Kira has to reconfigure his strike Gundam from its space calibrations to now be able to work in a desert terrain environment on Earth, which as you know applies a whole different set of physics. This attention to detail is something we always appreciate because, well, you can't exactly have science fiction without the science. The main theme of the series, and what ultimately drives the story, is the introduction of coordinators into the world and the effects that this scientific advancement has on society now that there exists these gene-enhanced superhumans. To some, this may just seem like a science fiction-like scenario far removed from our current existence. But it turns out it's actually not that far from being a reality. Gundam Seed may refer to them as coordinators, but many may be more familiar with the term designer babies or CRISPR babies. I mean, I can still remember hearing about the new CRISPR gene editing technology back when I was in school, and how the debate first started out about how this would greatly help improve agriculture and medicine, and then quickly jumped over to superhumans and the moral and ethical implications of gene editing human embryos, and ultimately who would even have access to such technology, and how would this impact the socioeconomic gap and politics and just the whole of the human population. <sighs> yeah, that was a lot. Because let us tell you, when it comes to the idea of altering human genes, it quickly becomes a slippery slope. How slippery? Well, <laughs> we'll go over some of the key talking points and concerns of gene editing over on our blog if you're interested. But what this all means is that this could be a topic that we should all be aware of. And Gundam Seed does a great job of tackling some of the finer philosophical and ethical talking points from both the natural side as well as the coordinators. Paying special attention to how all of this new scientific technology could affect people both mentally and emotionally. Like, what will it be like for people who are born naturally, without gene editing, to live alongside those who have been enhanced? Will they constantly feel as though they are lacking? Will those who have had their genes altered feel unnatural? As if they're not truly human? And on that note, what does it even mean to be human? These are all things that Gundam Seed tries to explore, and if it wasn't already obvious, we feel like they did a pretty good job of it, largely in part because the story is so character driven. Characters are constantly grappling with how they think they should feel about something, and how it honestly makes them feel, and then we see what they decide to do with that, which made for some intriguing if not very human interactions something we personally always gravitate towards in our anime. So basically, what we're saying is that if you like those science fiction a la Star Wars space opera-esque type shows filled with political intrigue and strong character growth along with a nice helping of mecha on top, then you should definitely give Gundam Seed a shot. For as much hate as it gets, there's a reason why it continues to be ranked in the top 3 best Gundam series in Japan. Now having such nostalgia for the original English dub by Ocean Studios, and the fact that it's notoriously difficult to get your hands on it now, we opted to skip the new English dubbed version by NYAV Post, and went straight to the Japanese audio version with English subs when rewatching the series. Which turned out to be great, and we'd highly recommend it for anyone else wanting to get into the series, which you can watch over on Crunchyroll. They have the HD version which excludes those pesky filler recap episodes, meaning you're really only looking at a 48 episode series in the long run. Longer than any other anime we've recommended so far, and yes, it will include some annoying repeat footage at times, but that's minor when compared to all the series has to offer. Some might also be interested to know that there is a sequel called Gundam Seed Destiny, 
though it sadly introduces a new main cast. Many characters from Gundam Seed do make an appearance, which is nice, and it also boasts a great soundtrack if nothing else. There are also whispers that the Gundam Seed movie that many of us have been waiting close to two decades for is finally going to happen. Probably not in 2022 like some production staff had initially announced. But regardless, this is still a great time for old and new fans of the show to get caught up with the story in preparation for when the film finally does drop. Not that we here at Lazy Lion really needed an excuse. Now if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button to let us know. And you can also hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, stay obsessed.